wote wa bunge la bunge la kitaifa wa bunge la county letu la Nyeri viongozi wote principals of um, various Tibet colleges um, tutors and students good afternoon hamjambo um, kwanza nataka nishukuru Mungu kwa kutupatia nafasi hii tufike katika Nyeri National Polytechnic and the launch of the Tibet 100 centenary flame marks a critical milestone in our nation's journey of economic transformation, highlighting the undeniable contribution made by technical and vocational education and training institutions to enhancing our capacity to achieve inclusive growth and equitable development. Today, we reflect on a century of the development of Tibets in Kenya and the role of Tibets in the development of our economy. We also take a moment to consider the path ahead of us and how we can harness the power of Tibets to translate the potential of our youth into positive contributions to economic development and national prosperity. The training of African youth in practical and technical skills began in 1914 in Machakos at the Government African School. However, the first Tibet was founded a decade later when the Native Industrial Training Depot was established in Kapete and mainly trained technicians to work on the railway. In the decades that followed, other Tibets were established at Mawego, Nairobi, Sikalagala, Kaiboi, Thika, Machakos, and Meru. By 2022, 52 constituencies only did not have Tibet institutions. Recognizing their importance in development, we committed to ensure that every constituency has at least one fully equipped Tibet in the next three years. As we celebrate 100 years of Tibet in Kenya, I am delighted to confirm that we are delivering on, the, on this commitment in full. We now have 24 national polytechnics across the country, 13 of which were recently upgraded. And we have 272 technical and vocational colleges with 16 scheduled to be completed this year, 2024-2025. I have instructed the ministry that the remaining constituencies, we must complete, start and complete their tibets in the next two years, so that we live up to our commitment that every constituency in Kenya will have a fully equipped tibet to give opportunity to millions of young people out there who deserve an opportunity to be their best. Let me also celebrate that on my way here this morning, I got the news from our friends in China that they have approved another 13 billion Kenya shillings to equip 70 of our Tibets <laughs> that today don't have sufficient equipment. It is a coincidence that when we are celebrating 100 years, we got news that we have additional equipment to equip our Tibets. Because Tibet, if education is the key, Tibet is the master key. And I am very proud of the achievements that we have made, the strides that we have made in our Tibet sector. I remember very well when President Kibaki promoted me to Ministry of Higher Education in 2009. I had a big conversation because all our education was focused 
on formal learning, largely theoretical learning. We even had huge classrooms in our universities of students learning social uh, degree courses, anthropology, sociology, and many others. And I asked the question then, when I was Minister for Higher Education, how are we going to align our education to be in tandem with the targets we have set for ourselves under Vision 2030? Because unless we have the men and women with skills and competences to assist us achieve the targets of Vision 2030, we run the risk of Vision 2030 being Vision 3020. And you know what that means. And I had a candid conversation and it was not an easy decision because I remember then when, as minister when I said we need to change focus. We cannot, it is good to learn history. And I was a very good student of history. We all know Vasco da Gama arrived. <laughs> you know, and uh, he came from somewhere and he ended somewhere. But he since passed away, you know. So while that is important, it is also important for us to think about the future. The future is different from the past. We need new skills. We need new competences. We need new approaches. We need new knowledge for us to tackle an ever-changing world. And therefore, we need to refocus our education as appropriately. And I want to thank the managers of our Tibet institutions, the principals you see here. Naomba wasimame hawa watu. Tuwapigie makofi. These good people, they are my friends. They know what we have done together. You may sit. When I first um, undertook the journey, because when uh, we started this journey of Tibet, there were less than 40,000 students. Today I'm very happy that we have 350,000 students in Tibet. <laughs> then, as uh, the deputy governor said, to go to a Tibet institution was almost like a punishment. It had been made to look like that is the place for people who have not done well. But I am very proud that today we have changed the perception. We have changed the branding. We have changed the place of Tibet to the extent that last year, up to 9,000 students who had been admitted to universities chose not to attend the university but to come to Tibet. Because it has been proven now that Tibet presents an opportunity for practical skills, for people to acquire knowledge, to acquire competencies that have significant relevance to where we want to go as a people. The strategic design of our bottom-up economic transformation agenda is to accelerate economic growth by investing in its critical pillars in a manner that creates employment for millions of talented, motivated, educated young people. The better plan, therefore, makes our young people the frontline actors in our quest for inclusive growth. And I want to speak to the young people of our nation. If you look at our plan, young people are front, back, center, 
left, right of our plan. Whether it is agriculture that we are focused on food security, we are working on how do we reduce the age of our farming community from 60 downwards, because it is the only chance we have to transform our agriculture and underwrite our food security. Whether it is our SMEs or manufacturing or um, the investment we are making in our special economic zones, our county aggregation industrial parks, that whole ecosystem is about young people and the employment that is potent in those spaces. Or whether it is our pillar on digital superhighway, it is about how we can monetize the talent, the knowledge, the expertise of the young people of Kenya using our digital platform. I was very happy this morning I went to the ICT hub here in Nyeri. And Mike, a gentleman from the village here, was telling me how in the last six months he has made 500,000 working online. I am not talking about somebody working in America. I'm talking about Mike in Nyeri working online here at the Tibet institution here. And it is the reason why, as a government, we have made changes to the CDF Act so that members of parliament, like my good friend Madenge here of Nyeri Town, they now have an opportunity, and we have agreed with them that every ward in Kenya, the same way we have a Tibet here in Nyeri Polytechnic, every ward in Kenya must have an ICT hub. We are going to equip those ICT hubs. We are going to connect them to internet. We are going to provide computer apparatus. We are going to provide teachers to make sure that we use the digital space and the talent, expertise, and knowledge of the millions of young people coming out of colleges like this or schools or universities to drive our economy through digital jobs. That is the commitment we have made. And I'm saying to the young people of our nation, for the first time, you have an administration that is focused on deliberately creating opportunities for employment, for work, for the millions of young people in our country. It is not sufficient for us to say we are going to grow the economy. We must be intentional. We must be deliberate on where we are going to create these jobs, whether it is in our housing plan, whether it is in our special economic zones, whether it is in our county aggregation industrial parks, whether it is in our ICT hubs. The focus is on getting young people in Kenya with their knowledge, with their skills, with their competencies, with their talents, to be able to monetize them and contribute meaningfully to driving our economy. And that is why we are also intentional on dealing with those who want to corrupt our young people with the drugs, with illicit brews, and we have put down our foot that it cannot be business as usual. We cannot have a drinking nation. We must have a working nation. It cannot, it cannot be both ways. And so those who are telling us that we have closed their bars and they are unhappy with us, surely. Ile asara tumepata na madawa ya kulevia, you go to centers, you go to towns, you go to estates and villages, and you find young people who can hardly stand straight because of drugs, 
because of that is unacceptable. And therefore, we are going to be firm, we are going to be forthright, because I know for sure nobody is going to die because they were not drunk. Hakuna mtu atakufa kwa sababu hajalewa. Na kama kuna mtu atakuwa mgonjwa kwa sababu hajalewa tutampeleka hospitali. The defining impact of this event is the outline the Tibet sector's role in a rapidly transforming economy as the Africa continental free trade area takes shape swiftly and our country aims to achieve newly industrialized status within a decade. Tibet's capacity to address the country's human resource needs, supply the labor market with skilled, versatile and innovative personnel and align millions of youth with their aspirations livelihoods is paramount to us. To ensure full strategic alignment with better, the Presidential Working Party on Education Reforms reviewed our policy on Tibet and not only to address our industrial and competitive imperatives, but also to conform to the UNESCO strategy for Tibet by ensuring that all our youth are equipped with the skills required to facilitate employment, decent work, entrepreneurship, and lifelong learning. Subsequently, the Cabinet has approved the implementation of a number of measures in connection with Tibet institution over the past year. To begin with, 13 vocational training colleges have been upgraded to National Polytechnics, and also the Morendat Institute of Oil and Gas in Naivasha has likewise been elevated to a National Polytechnic. Secondly, the mandate of Tibet and Curriculum Development Assessment and Certification Council to oversee the curriculum design, assessment, and certification in the Tibet sector has been reinstated in line with the Tibet Act of 2013. And I'm very proud that I have uh, now that tall, very good uh, gentleman, Kimoinge, and he is doing a fantastic job. Somebody somewhere for strange reasons, decided to abolish SIDAC and take this whole Tibet sector back to the Kenya National Examination Council. Something that in the design that we worked on, it was very clear that we need a different assessment tool for Tibet institutions, like what we are seeing here. Today, we were shown there how they now mark exams. Many students used to fail exams in Tibet because their English is not so good. But you see, when you want to build, when you are a mason, there is no masonry in English. <laughs> masonry is masonry by any whatever language. So if you are not in, good in English, it is the reason why you are a Mason, because you are not an English speaker, you are not an English teacher. <laughs> so, instead of marking the English, mark the masonry skill. And that, and that is that's the difference we are making. And therefore, I want to congratulate SIDAC. Please take up the responsibility of making sure that our young people acquire the skills without hindrances from other extraneous uh, matters. Just imagine that hapo uh, nyuma mtu amekuja kusomea useremala anapata A kwa kwa skill ya useremala lakini kwa sababu ile examination iko na English iko na maths Iko na sijui nini, anaanguka maths na English na nini, muisho, anasemekana, iyo exam yote, anaanguka. Na hajakuja kusomea esabu, hajakuja kusomea. Sindio? So, this is, this is why we are saying we need a different examination 
for the people who have come here to acquire skills and competence. We must mark and assess the skill and the competence. I was very proud when I met uh, a young man uh, in one of the booths there. And I asked him, okay, so you have come to learn uh, tailoring. Akaniambia apana. Nimekuja kusomea fashion and design. I apologize. Because tailoring kumbe ni ile azamani. Sasa ya saizi inaitua? Eh, apo. So, muendele na fashion and design. So, um, I'm also happy that we all agreed additionally, as you will recall, the government launched the policy on recognition of prior learning just a few weeks ago. In fact, it was done my by my deputy president. Further to this, we have resolved to fast track the implementation of the recommendations of the Presidential Committee on Education Reforms. This financial year, we have allocated 28.3 billion to Tibet institutions and intend to keep raising their location in future until we achieve an optimal level of investment. At the same time, the recruitment of an additional 2,000 Tibet tutors is underway with a view to bringing the total number of tutors hired under the better to 4,000. Similarly, we are in the process of equipping 70 Tibet institutions with the state-of-the-art equipment under a partnership with the government of China. And I just announced to you that I got the response this morning because I visited China last year with this intention. This morning it was confirmed that the funding had been approved. We are serious about introducing our youth to the best skills, knowledge, and technology that is available globally. I have also instructed the ministry when I was in Italy um, about two months ago, I agreed with the Italian Prime Minister to support our TVET, 40 of them, so there is now uh, consultations between our ministry and the government of Italy for us to equip another 40 uh, technical training colleges with additional equipment as we improve the quality of our learning and enhance the skills transfer to our young people and make our Tibet institutions truly international. Let me also say we have already 113 Jitume centers across the country and we decided to start the Jitume centers where we have computers, internet, and uh, other facilities available. We started them with every Tibet. In fact, it is our intention that as we wait for the ICT hubs that will be built by our members of parliament, we will deploy 20,000 computers in our Tibet, all our Tibet. We are on course, 113 have already been uh, equipped we are going to equip all the 272 shortly. And I want to ask the principals who are here to follow up with our Ministry of ICT to make sure that the relevant infrastructure is set up so that we can train more young people who are in our Tibet institutions. They can monetize their talent. They can work online even as they continue learning in school. In total, 10,780 digital devices have been installed in these centers and, and uh, 370 tutors from various Tibet centers have been trained to support this Jitume program. I am particularly encouraged that the National Tibet Blueprint provides for a workforce development strategy that fosters youth employment in the country and that the Presidential Working Party on Education Reforms has been able to implement full convergence of our policy frameworks and with the strategic agenda for national economic transformation. 
the institutionalization of linkages with industry, strengthening of open distance e-learning, implementation of CBC, promotion of lifelong learning, streamlining teacher trainer program in TVET, and the digitization of TVET curriculum delivery are among the key outcomes of this convergence facilitated by the Presidential Working Party. It is clear, then, that we have laid a firm foundation for the modernization of Tibet in Kenya in order to make it a fundamental driver of every aspect of our plan. These celebrations provide an opportunity to, provide, to profile Tibet positively as the vehicle of opportunities for youth and a catalyst of our transformation. TVET at 100 is also our launching pad to deploy the competence-based education and training curriculum for TVET to explore unfolding possibilities, including the integration of intelligent digital technologies into manufacturing and other industrial processes, the digital economy, big data, artificial intelligence, automation, robotics, and machine learning. I am therefore delighted to preside over the launch of Tibet at 100, which positions Kenya's Tibet sector as the bearer of our nation's brilliant torch of transformation. I urge you to traverse the country as you spread the word about the historic contribution and future promise of Tibet. Each and every one of us here, including the hundreds of thousands of young people that are in the Tibet ecosystem, I want to assure them that we will go out of our way. We will do whatever it takes to make sure that Tibet plays its rightful role in generating the quality manpower that will drive the transformation of our country. I also want to tell the Tibet uh, students that in the ecosystem of the plan that we are putting together, there are opportunities in every sector of our plan, from agriculture to EPZs, to our special economic zones, to, to our county aggregation industrial parks, to our G2 centers, to all the sectors, including our UHC program, has opportunities for young people to play their rightful role in driving the economy of our country. And that opportunity is spread both locally and internationally. We have a deliberate program also of making sure that Kenyans run the world by exporting our labor across many borders. We are concluding bilateral labor agreements with 19 countries where we want to provide opportunity for young people from Kenya with different skills. The conversation uh, to work in those areas. So as you go through your learning processes in Kenya, the young people must set their eyes on the horizon, knowing that there are opportunities locally, and we are fashioning those opportunities deliberately, but there are also opportunities beyond our borders because the same way others have gold, we have our human capital as the premier export that can, Kenya can give the world. And I am looking forward to the days when Kenyans will be running the economies of Europe and America, because that is a reality that we can achieve in our lifetime. Go forth and share with our young men and women throughout the country the scope of opportunities that Tibet can unlock for their benefit. Today we light the flame of learning, entrepreneurship, innovation, and work. Let it light our path for decades to come until we achieve inclusive growth and sustainable development. I'm very proud to be in Nyeri again uh, today. I know we made a commitment to this great institution. I have discussed with Principal Mwangi on some of the aspects of infrastructure required in this school. He has 
informed me of the gaps and I have committed that I will do something about it. So that um, Nyeri Polytech National Polytechnic can play its rightful place. I know that in your neighborhood here, <clears throat> your member of parliament has also told me that there is a school. Nyamachaki Primary is your neighborhood here. There's a small school there with uh, inadequate facilities. And Meshmiwa, because they are neighbors to this school, I am going to commit 10 million shillings for now. And uh, to see how we can upgrade that school, because I'm told there are 2,600 students, uh, 2,600 students, and they are learning in not so very good condition. Your member of parliament has been on my case, and he told me, unless I say something here, things may not be very good, and I may not be allowed to leave this place. Thank you, so, and you can see with his height, <laughs> he can be very dangerous. So, Mashmiwa, I hope I have bought my peace to leave. So, otherwise, uh, to the great people of Nyeri, Asanteni Sana, na nimesikia vile gabana wetu wa mesema, kuhusu uh, stadium yetu hapa Nyeri, imetuletea matatizo kiasi, lakini tutaishugulikia. Vile ameniambia, uh, nitafanya hivyo. Simulisikia vile aliniambia? Alitema nifanya nini? Uh, nitafanya hivyo. Kwa sababu wale watu wote wako kwa hiyo area niliwaambia mambo yao ni matatu. So otherwise, nataka niseme pongezi, eh, kwenu nini nyote, and to assure that Tibet... Eh, oh, okay, 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 okay. Mumesema vile vile kuna barabara hapa hiko na matatizo. <laughs> so nimesikia vile mumesema, na next week nitatuma waziri wa barabara akuje hapo, na apange vile hiyo barabara itajengwa. Na vile vile tumesha kubaliana kwamba katika ile program yetu ya housing. Pia tuko na nafasi, ngoja, ngoja kidogo. Pia tuko na nafasi, angoja tu kidogo tutamuongelesha. Tuta tuko pia na nafasi ya kutengeneza aketi tu hapo nyuma wewe. Very good. Tuko pia na nafasi ya kujenga hostels katika college hii yenu. So, mimi ninataka ni waeleze pia uyu mjumbe wenu, mweshmiwa madhenge, atapanga na mimi, ili tuwakikisha kwamba program yetu ya affordable housing pia tunaileta mpaka ikafika kwa Nyeri Polytechnic kwa mpango wa hostels ya wanafunzi ndio wanafunzi wengi waweze kusoma na kuishi mahali ambapo pana usalama na vile vile pana usafi na mambo yale mengine ambayo yanahitajika kwa hivyo nataka niseme asante sana kwa kutupokea na watakia heri god bless you and see you soon thank you very much Thank you, Your Excellency.